All right, guys, uh, pre-AP biology. Uh, today, I want to continue with our um, notes on um, cells, especially the internal workings of the cell. Uh, just real quick, I wanted to review a couple things here uh, from the last <coughs> uh, lecture that I gave. Uh, make sure we're familiar with this picture. Uh, this is, again, the cell membrane, otherwise known as the phospholipid bilayer. Again, phospholipid bilayer. There's two layers of phospholipids. Uh, make sure we understand, again, how this um, cell membrane is structured. Right. Again, we've got these two different layers. You know, this little molecule here is what makes up um, you know, the majority of the cell membrane. And remember that the head of it is what we call hydrophilic, which means it likes water. The tail is hydrophobic, which means it doesn't like water, which gives us an idea of why these molecules are arranged the way that they're arranged. Right. The tails all face inwards away from the water, which is on the outside and the inside of the cell, right? The heads all face the directions of the water. Uh, so it gives us some idea, again, of, of, of how that's put together. Uh, we also meet, need to make sure uh, that we understand the, the, the functions of the three different cell membrane proteins. All right, make sure you understand what a marker protein does, why those are important. Uh, receptor proteins, why they're important, and then finally channel proteins. I think with channel proteins, I think the the um, structure of it kind of gives you an idea of what it actually does, at least hopefully that it does. All right, <clears throat> so today we're going to focus on the uh, the inside of the cell, right? So once you, you know, get inside, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on inside of a cell. So we're gonna talk about what all of those structures do today. Again, we're gonna take the analogy of the cell you know, kind of acting like a factory. Um, so one thing we have to remember again is that you know cells do something, right? You're alive because your cells are alive and you're alive because those cells are making proteins. Remember, every cell in your body makes proteins protein. Uh, they make different proteins, you know, skin cells, brain cells, liver cells, but nonetheless, that's what they're doing. When your cells stop making proteins, uh, that's when your cells stop working. Um, and that's when, you know, you get sick or maybe die. All right. So we don't want our cells ever stop making these proteins. That's a, a really important thing. So here's this kind of a basic picture of a, of a cell. I like this one because it's really simple. Um, you know, there's a hundred different you know, pictures on the internet of, of, of cells and organelles, but I like this one because it, it kind of keeps it you know, looking fairly simple uh, for us to sort of understand. So again, uh, uh, up to this point, you know, all we've really talked about is that cell membrane, right? That goes all the way around the cell, right? It's that double layer of phospholipid molecules Again, it's kind of simple here. I have more complex diagrams of it uh, in my previous lecture. But, um, you know, once we get past that membrane, once you get to the inside, you, then you've got all this stuff that's in here. We're going to talk about all these things today. These are called organelles. So we're going to start off today with a term called cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is just a big fancy word for the inside of the cell. That's really all it is. Or the inside of the factory. Um, you know, the inside basically consists of two things. Uh, one of them is water. There's a ton of it. Um, we have a big fancy word for that. It's called cytosol. Cyto means cell. Sol deals with liquid. So this is cellular liquid, which is basically water. So there's a bunch of water on the inside of the cell. It's kind of more like a jelly, I guess, than it is water, but it's mostly water. Um, and then we have our, our, all of our organelles. You know, I, I kind of think of, I'm going to go back to this picture real quick. I, I like to think of a cell as like a big jello mold. You know, that like, let's say your aunt or your grandma would make like on Christmas or something. You know, it's got like the fruit like kind of embedded inside of it. You know, that's kind of what all the organelles are and stuff. But that's kind of what cells are like. Right? It's, it's, think of them as like a jello mold. 
where the inside is basically jelly or liquid. And then you've got all these suspended little particles in there um, that are all doing their, you know, their own individual jobs uh, to make the cell work and to, to help the cell make proteins. So the cytoplasm, again, is just the inside of the cell. Then we have something called the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is exactly what it says it is. It, it kind of gives structure uh, to the cell. There's these little thin tubes or filaments. You don't see them in this picture here. Uh, I don't think they're even, they're even shown here, which is okay. Um, but just think of them as kind of like the, 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 the structure that holds up a tent. You know, think of like, um, like tent poles, or I, I, I like this analogy even better. Um, if, if any of your parents are in construction or, you know, they're, they're iron workers or whatever they do, um, you know, before you build, let's say a concrete building, let's say a school building, for example, you know, one of the most important jobs is all of this iron work needs to get done, all this rebar and, and that's what you're seeing here in this picture, which is kind of like the internal skeleton of the building. You know, what they'll do is they'll lay all that rebar down, all that iron bar, and then they'll build the concrete around it. And, and what that iron does is it stabilizes the entire structure. So it's not just going to blow over with the wind or anything like that. Uh, but that's like really important. It like gives like an internal structure to the actual building itself. That's kind of what the cytoskeleton does. It just gives structure to the cell. Uh, it also acts as uh, a, a, a method uh, that which substances can travel from one part of the cell to another. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of almost, almost like railroad tracks on the inside of the cell. So there's kind of several different functions, I guess, of the uh, cytoskeleton, cytoskeleton. But the biggest thing is just it gives structure to the cell. All right, the mitochondria. This is one that you've probably heard of before. The mitochondria is what supplies energy to the cell. Um, you know, for example, in a factory, right, all the machines, I mean, they, they need energy. Like if, if there's no electricity, for example, then they're not going to work very well. You know, even the people that work inside of a factory you know, they need energy, right? They need food, things like that, so that they can do their jobs. Um, but the mitochondria is basically the organelle that supplies the cell with energy. Now, what they do is they take food energy, right? They take, like, for example, if you eat it, eat, let's say you eat a cheeseburger or something today for lunch, um, you know, in that cheeseburger, there's energy. Now, your digestive system has to break the bonds of that energy and, and release it so that your cells can eventually you know, convert it and use it. But what your mitochondria's job is, is to take food energy and convert it into cellular energy. There's a difference between the energy that's in your food and the energy that your cells use. So, for example, like in a cheeseburger, there's a lot of food energy, right? There's calories and things like that. But that, that doesn't mean that it's ready to be used by your cells. So your mitochondria, their job is to convert that energy into a usable form of energy. Now, this is a term here. It's called ATP. This is cellular energy. This is Think of it as like cellular gasoline, right? I mean... If a car doesn't have gas, then a car ain't going to work. If your cells don't have ATP, then the cells aren't going to work. So the mitochondria is actually what takes that food energy and converts it into cellular energy, ATP, so that your cells can function and build proteins and all that stuff. You know, some cells actually have more mitochondria than others. You know, think about some cells in your body that uh, need a lot of energy. You know, one, one, one cell that comes to mind is your muscle cells, right? Muscles need a lot of energy, especially like your heart. I mean, your heart's a big muscle, basically. So that's one type of cell that uh, probably needs a lot of mitochondria, probably needs a lot of energy. 
Um, here's an interesting fact. Nearly all of your mitochondria are inherited from your mother. So like if you're like super tired all the time, and like lethargic and stuff, I don't know, maybe you can blame your mom for giving you bad mitochondria. I don't know. Don't say that to her though. But it is true. She does give you most of her mitochondria. Um, so here's a picture again, back to our cell. Here's our little mitochondria here. These little kind of peanut shape looking guys here. Here's kind of a, um, an actual uh, microscopic view of one. Uh, you'll notice that it kind of has like these like inner folds on the inside. It's actually a very complex molecule. It actually has its own membrane around it. You know, so when we say like a, a you know, membrane bound organelles, you know, this is a really good example of a membrane bound organelle. All right, the nucleus of the cell. And the nucleus is sort of the central office of the cell. You know, this is where most of the uh, activity of the cell is all um, kind of initiated from. Um, you know, the big thing about the nucleus, you're probably already somewhat familiar with this, is that it contains all of your DNA. Um, this is what we call chromatin. Um, I, I, like if, if you see a picture of a cell with chromatin in it, it just kind of looks like a big plate of spaghetti. It's like a bunch of, you know, just stringy um, uh, looking DNA. I mean, that's basically what it is. Um, but that chromatin eventually will change shape. It'll actually condense and it'll turn into uh, chromosomes, which you have 46 of in every single one of your body cells. So inside of the nucleus of every body cell, brain cells, liver cells, skin cells, whatever, there are 46 chromosomes worth of genetic information. And, and we'll talk more about this in a couple of weeks, but, you know, again, DNA, you know, that's what carries all the instructions uh, for your genetics. Uh, and you know, more importantly, um, these instructions are for how to build your proteins. Remember we said that cells make proteins, right? Well, every cell is different as far as like what proteins they make. And your cells have to have directions on how to build these things. It's kind of like, I think I use the analogy of, of um, like, um, like Lego bricks, like building like Lego sets and things like that. I mean, you can have all the Lego blocks you want, but if you don't have like a booklet of instructions that shows you how to put them together, it might be difficult to build whatever you're trying to build, right? So um, think of, of all that DNA as sort of the instructions for how to build the proteins. So if your cells don't have those instructions, or if the instructions are wrong, then those proteins aren't going to be built correctly, okay? So that's kind of an important thing. So again, here's our, our nucleus, kind of this big... Um, uh, kind of greenish structure here. Uh, this whole thing is the nucleus, which has its own membrane around it, by the way, which is kind of an important thing. <clears throat> On the inside of the nucleus is a structure called the nucleolus. I will talk about that in a, in a, in a couple of minutes. All right. Uh, the last organelle that I want to talk about in this first video is called ribosomes. Now, ribosomes... Think of them as sort of the assembly line workers. You know, their job is to basically build the proteins. You know, uh, on the inside of the cell or on the inside of the factory, right, you've got, let's say, for example, I don't know, um, it's a car factory or something, right? You've got like assembly line workers that are, you know, putting the tires on the car, putting the windshield on the car, painting the car, right? I mean, they're, they're just working together to build uh, the proteins. So we have a special name for that. It's called protein synthesis. It just means building protein. It's actually a pretty complex process, but for right now, don't worry so much about that. Um, but once those proteins are built, you know, they can either be used by the cell or they can be shipped out to other cells, right? I mean, other cells can, I mean, just because you're at a red blood cell makes a protein, it doesn't mean that it can't be used by another cell. Um, so it can be shipped out to other cells. Um, now, interesting fact here says ribosomes are actually built inside 
of a dark region of the nucleus called the nucleolus. So I'm going to go back to this picture here real quick. You know, again, that nucleolus that's on the inside of the nucleus, this is where ribosomes actually get built. All right, so we've got the nucleus here, which contains all the DNA and all 46 chromosomes. But there's a nucleolus on the inside as well, which is where uh, ribosomes are actually getting built. And the ribosomes, they're out here, these, these little dots, these are little ribosomes. And they're, they're usually scattered all around the cell. You even see them you know, kind of attached to other structures, and things like that, which we'll talk about more in a, in a little while as well. All right, guys, I'm going to stop the video here for, for this first part. Then I'll continue with part two uh, on the second video.